Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. I am using something super exciting in today's video. Now, I was not planning Chinese New Year videos this year until Wendy from Toonpish Craft popped these through my door and they are simply beautiful. These are dragon silicon inlays. Now, if you do not know Wendy over at Toonpish Crafts, she is here on YouTube. She also makes and sells silicon inlays, among other things, on her website. So I will leave the details down below. And she also sent me some of the miniatures. Guys, do you remember those teeny tiny miniatures? <laughs> anyway, I look forward to the day I use those. I immediately fell in love with this inlay here. I mean, I love them all. They are gorgeous and they would make perfect, like chunky emblems. They're all around one inch across. There's a couple of smaller ones here, but the one inch ones are just perfectly round. You know me, I love a circle. Anything that fits in a circle, I am happy. My first initial thought was, they're gonna just be too big for my bezels. I don't have any bezels currently that are bigger than one inch. And of course I need to be able to fit the inlay directly in. Now this mold here is from Amazon. I did say in a previous video, this is a Let's Resin mold. It's actually from Amazon I got this mold and I will link it below, but it's got the most perfect round circle pendant in there. And I figured I would definitely use that. Now I did want to make more than one. In an ideal world, I would have a whole mold of just that circle, but I don't have it. So I decided to knock up my own silicon mold using the silicon putty from Just For You Online. I figured just making two was better than one, even though I would, yeah, like I say, I would just love to make them all. I'd love to make them all. I'm placing down my generic non-branded transfer tape, like your vinyl Cricut transfer tape. I'm placing that down and I'm putting my cookie cutter on top. And then I am getting equal parts of this putty. So part A, part B, equal parts. You can use the spoons or you can weigh it out. Um, it kind of works out both ways. And then I'm just mixing it all together until I am completely blended. And this is just one normal kind of lighter purple color. Then I'm squishing it around my cookie cutter. For this project, I am gonna be using the double-sided UV light. This is really gonna help the UV attack from both sides, top and bottom, cure it, so I don't have to worry about the bottoms. You know, we don't want those wet bottoms. First up is this mold. Again, this is one of my favorite molds. I have mentioned that before. And I'm just putting in a thin layer of UV resin. These silicon inlays are going to be placed down in to UV resin. You can do it either way. You can put them in your mold or you can place them down into your resin. I chose that way. <laughs> then once the putty was cured, I'm just peeling off that back and that's gonna clean it up nicely for me. But it was here I noticed this huge chunk out of the side which was not ideal and I didn't realize that my cookie cutter kind of like the join you know where it's welded it wasn't welded very well so I, I do end up having a very very unsightly chunk out of the side but hey what is it the children say nowadays we roll <laughs> we continue onwards Another layer of UV resin into this one here. Now, both of those layers of UV resin are going to get fully cured under the UV light before we put in another layer of UV resin. The reason I do it this way is just because I want the pendant to be quite filled up. Equally, I don't want the inlay to go down into a deep layer of resin. I want that to go down into a really, really thin, like one mil, two mil max layer of UV resin. So I always do a layer first, cure it, and then I pour in the little layer that the inlay is gonna go into. And you see me here just going slowly, making sure that I don't pour too much. I do use my tool to make sure it goes all the way to the edges. And then both of these go back under the UV light. I'm definitely considering, I'm definitely considering making a mold of the one here on the right hand side. That circle is one of the most perfect size circles for pretty much anything. And I would love to just make like 10 of those and make a mold of it because it's just the most perfect size. Anyway, as for the inlays, these two were my favorite. They are the most elaborate, very, they're just so Game of Thrones. And like I said, yeah, they're swirly and whirly and all of the words that can go in to describe the, the, 
the fanciness of them. So I chose these two to work with. Like I said before, the other dragons are gorgeous, but these two were absolutely standing out to me, so I used these. To get them in the resin, now the resin layer isn't that fat, it's quite a thin layer, so I'm just kind of bending them in the middle and letting them do their own thing. They're gonna get bent in the middle, place them down, and then they're gonna spread their wings, <laughs> literally, and just make sure they are central before you cure them in there. Then it was time to peel them back. Now, if you're wondering about time, I cured each layer for five minutes. This UV light from Let's Resin has a five minute cure time, which is super handy. I cured each layer for five minutes. So the first layer and then the layer with the inlay in and then peel them out, peel them out. It doesn't get any easier than that. They honestly came out like a dream. None of the inlay got stuck inside the resin because I put a really tiny amount of resin down to lay my inlay into. So that, that really is the science behind it. Don't put too much resin in. There is a risk your inlays will sink. <laughs> Mostly they float, but you never know. Now, of course, when doing anything like this, my go-to product is the Let's Resin Chameleon Powders. So I'm using one of my favorites, which is the teal. I absolutely love this color. And the other color is the Galaxy. But depending on what it is you're making, then you, of course, will be choosing whatever color works best for you. Blue is my favorite color anyway. So yeah, both these colors work. I'm just using a soft bristle brush to make sure that I've got down into all of the nooks and crannies of the inlays. And just look at the inlays, they're just beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And I, you know, I think medieval is the word I'm looking for. That's it. They remind me of medieval medallions. There we go. <laughs> I got it out in the end. The black on the background, it's up to you how you do it. You can use epoxy resin with black pigment. You can use your Let's Resin Ready Made Black or you can do what I'm doing and use polyurethane. The reason I use polyurethane is purely for speed. This is a black ready to go polyurethane from I Love Mixed Media here in the UK. It's mixable part A, part B. You mix for like 30 seconds, you pour it, and you can literally demold 20 minutes later. So I really only use this for speed and it's the perfect backing. I cannot tell you. <laughs> I I don't do dragons. If, if you follow me, you know I don't do dragons. You've probably never seen dragons on my channel. Wendy from Toonpish Crafts is dragon queen. Like, she does the dragons. She loves dragons. So that is probably why I wasn't really going to do anything this year. Because dragons are just not my thing. But they are now because look at these. This one on the right stop it now is straight out of game of thrones the one on the left is simply beautiful it reminds me it looks very very cloudy very wispy very fairy tale the one on the right is screaming john snow <laughs> i absolutely love this the mold has helped though because this mold is beautiful but check out this inlay. All of those details, absolutely stunning. And the powder, of course, we cannot forget the Let's Resin Chameleon Powder. This one is by far my favourite. Now, I'm not going to lie, I did want to continue. I, I felt like I could easily make another 10 of these and use every single one of Wendy's inlays to show you each and every single one. But I had time restraints this week, so I didn't carry on. <laughs> now, this one here is a hot mess it is the, the inlay itself stunning cannot fault it the powder beautiful cannot fault it but the actual mold that I made is probably the weakest mold I've ever made but here's the thing guys it is nothing that a pair of scissors a little bit of a carve a little bit of a trim and a sand will not sort out and if I'm honest, I feel like even just cutting off the edges and just neating and neating, neatening, neatening it up has already made a massive difference. Top coat this with a nice chunky layer of UV, put a nice bit of UV on the back, stick a magnet on it, and you've got yourself a gorgeous chunky fridge magnet medallion. And still, I love it. <laughs> it is crazy wonky. But that's because I didn't really notice the cookie cutter was so bad. But I love the results still. I love the inlays. This one is without doubt my favourite. I think this would look just stunning in gold. Pure gold. Like, can you just see it? 
I, I can't get over it. So, Wendy, thank you so much for sending these over to me. And thank you for the miniatures that I got a couple of days later. You lured me into a false sense of security there, my dear, because two days later I got this teeny tiny, itsy bitsy, tiny little box filled with like eight <laughs> miniature inlays. Um, so, yeah, I look forward to using those as well at some stage. But these are heavenly. If you are interested in these, of course, I will leave Wendy's details below. Now, I am not affiliated with Wendy. I do not earn commission if you buy anything from Wendy. Wendy is my friend and she sent these to me to play with. And I'm glad she did because this is beautiful. If you are celebrating Chinese New Year, Happy New Year to you all. And I will see you all on Saturday for the Valentine's collaboration. Bye.